Here we go, onward and upward, butter my bread, life is beautiful. <sighs> life is beautiful. I'm just going to say that much. I'm just going to say that much. All right, everyone, some boxes arrived, and I have said this in the past that um, it's been a little while, so I think it was in January, but sometimes I buy running shoes, sometimes companies send shoes to me okay so it's like a, it's a mixture i get that question quite a bit i think on i don't know where i think in the comments down below so it's a mixture where i i buy them personally like i'm interested in that shoe and then sometimes shoes show up at my house like these two i don't know what is inside this and it's always hard to tell based on the address so let's open these up i don't have my handy my big, my big, oh my my, okay, there we go, here we go, a one, a two, a one, two, three, Skechers in the house, and I have been interested in the shoe, oh, oh, that is sweet, oh my goodness, Ultra Flight Midsole, Skechers Vanish, get one more, this one says Urgent, so I don't know what that's all about, uh, da, 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 da. oh yes, okay, I think I might have a sneaking suspicion what's going on in here. Yup. Aha. Uh -huh. Yup. Okay. One, two, three. Oh yeah. The Skechers Elite with the carbon fiber plate in the midsole. Skechers Elite. Oh my, my Speed Elite, I should say. Skechers Speed Elite. That is amazing. Look at that. Okay, let's. Oh man, I might have to take this out for a run today. Whoa, whoa, that is lightweight. In fact, I cannot resist. I've got to weigh this right now. Okay, oh my goodness, there's the scale right there. Let's set it on the table, put it into ounces first. And yes, so this is the next, oh guys, the competition has begun for carbon fiber plate racing shoes in 2020. Uh, guy, as we know, as we all know, Nike has dominated the carbon fiber plate game for two years, three years. Yeah, about a little over three years, actually. So now Skechers is the next for me. And then it's, a, it's just an onslaught. Saucony, uh, Adidas, Brooks, um, who else is um, New Balance? Oh my goodness, the list goes on. So let the games begin. Here we go. All right, let's just see here. Woo! 5.3 ounces. 5.3 ounces in my size, in my size. Obviously for men's, in fact, I'll put it on the screen right now, men's size nine. Let's see, and let's see, 152 grams. 152 grams, that is what I'm talking about. Definitely cannot resist taking out the Skechers Speed Elite for my long run today. Let's go, come on. Okay, here we go, everyone. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, Skechers, go run, Speed Elite Hyper. First impression, not my full review. That'll happen after 50 miles. Let's dive in. First of all, uh, the drop on the Speed Elite Hyper. We're looking at a four millimeter drop. So pretty low for a racing shoe. 23 millimeter stack height in the heel, 19 in the forefoot. I saw a couple uh, conflicting reports on those numbers, but uh, I'm gonna go, I did some rough measurements. I'm gonna go with 23 and 19 for that slope inside the Speed Elite Hyper. For the weight, in men's size nine, we're looking at five point, I saw 5.6 ounces, and in my, no, sorry, sorry, 5.9 ounces in men's size nine, and five, again, once again, 5.3 ounces in my size. So we're talking lightweight, featherweight, as I said out there on the rows, just like you notice it immediately through your gait cycle when you're going, like it just feels very lightweight, even just holding it in my hands, even compared to like the next percent 
or I can't wait to compare it to the other carbon fiber plate shoes coming onto the marketplace. Okay, here we go. The upper is a, um, it's a TPU mesh upper, which basically means it has a little bit of a plasticky feel, okay? Very lightweight, uh, fairly breathable today, and it would be interesting to take the shoe out uh, in a very humid, humid, uh, humid climate, or when like I'm racing and you're sweating a lot, just to see how it wicks away the water. I don't know how it's gonna do, uh, but anyway, it's, and it's translucent, meaning you can literally see through the upper. So it's a very, very minimalist, uh, torn down upper and the heel counter. Look at, oh my gosh, that's crazy. Look at that heel counter, just breaking down real easy. And um, I'll just say it right now, as far as the fit goes. I went true to size, no issues with a fit, but I did feel a little bit of slipping in the heel the first mile of today's run. But then at about mile 10, oh yeah, I should tell you what the run was today, um, but at about mile 10, I, I remembered, wait a minute, what's going on in the heel counter? Nothing, like I, I had completely forgotten about the fact that my heel felt like it was slipping just a little bit early on in the run. So today's run, 21 miles, 640 a mile. I'll explain more about that here in a little bit. Uh, 21 miles. So I threw steezy pace out the window. Um, so there we go for the fit. And for that midsole, we're looking at the hyperburst midsole. And I, oh, I wish so bad I could see what the carbon fiber plate looks like inside this midsole. And in addition, the angle and the the shape of the carbon fiber plate compared to, yes, yes, here we go, compared to the 4%, the next percent, and all the other shoes that are coming onto the marketplace very, very soon. And for the outsole, the bottom of the shoe, you see the yellow Goodyear rubber, all right? Skechers has a partnership with Goodyear, so I love how they're cross-pollinating there. And yeah, the Goodyear rubber felt fine. Like I didn't feel like I was slipping, even though I did run over some ice and snow today just a little bit. Um, it did fine, but there is quite a bit of... There's quite a bit of exposed um, hyperburst midsole foam on that outsole. You can see it there. And what Skechers is promoting for this shoe is a midfoot strike. Not a heel strike, not a forefoot strike, but a midfoot strike. And it even says it right here on the bottom of the outsole. So that is interesting. Um, yeah, it's just interesting that they're promoting that in their marketing. For my positive and my drawback, the positive it felt so fast, so lightweight, immediately. It really, really was nice. Like, I actually had to rein it in a little bit, just a little bit. Like, I, I ended up running pretty fast today, but um, it felt very, very fast. But the drawback here, this, is, this actually hasn't happened to me in a long time, is that I was confused as to where to strike in the shoe, whether to do a little more midfoot, uh, when, I, when my legs were getting tired, I was doing a little bit of heel striking. And then my traditional kind of racing posture for my foot strike is that four foot strike right below the toes. And it's like I was, I was trying different ways. And here's what, okay, here's what's crazy. I wish it was out here. Is it? Oh, yeah, here we go. So compared to the stack height of the next percent and the stack height of the Speed Elite from Skechers, the stack height of the next percent is much, much higher. So it gets into the whole discussion about should you be um, protecting your legs a little bit for a marathon racing shoe with a little more stack height, or is the stack height changing your gait cycle too much and you're protecting your legs too much with a high stack height versus a lower stack height? And I'm gonna put this into the medium to low stack height uh, category, especially for a marathon racing shoe and yes it is being marketed as a marathon racing shoe just so everyone knows and I'll give you my opinion here in a second as to how I would use this shoe who how I will use this shoe moving forward um, so the drawback is that I was confused as to where to strike my foot I was trying different ways and um, like when I was doing a little more midfoot my heel was getting a little tired uh, a little bit of pounding in the heel probably because that stack height is just a little bit lower. So anyway, something to keep in mind as you're discerning your marathon racing shoe in 2020. So for my durability prediction, 200 to 250, maybe 300 miles, pretty low. That exposed midsole foam, uh, the, the even the, the rubber on the outsole, even though it's Goodyear rubber, it just, uh, I can sense that this is not going to have a lot of life to it. Now it's a racing shoe, so um, you know, maybe you just, you save it for racing days. And if you race over a hundred miles in the shoe, that's a lot of racing in this shoe. So, but I do predict that the durability is going to be a little bit lower. Okay, here we go. How will I use this shoe moving forward? Ladies and gentlemen, 
I may have just found, and here's the title of the vlog, Marathon versus Half Marathon. This might be a half marathon racing shoe. I don't know if it's enough protection for the leg. I, I went 21 miles today and I did pretty good, but I must say like walking around my house, my legs felt a little, felt a little tired, a little beat up afterward. And so I'm just wondering, this could be the Irving half marathon shoe that I use on March 28th. It's so lightweight, felt snappy, and I don't know, I'm kind of excited. So I'm leaning toward half marathon versus marathon for the Skechers Go Run Speed Elite Typer, all of that long name. And onto that price point, $190, hmm, interesting. I think it's actually not bad, especially compared to all these other carbon fiber plate shoes on the marketplace that are about to arrive on the marketplace. This is gonna, I think this is gonna be in the more affordable category for carbon fiber plate shoes. So if you if you wanna race in a, I need to come up with a carbon fiber plate, in a CFP shoe, if you wanna race in a CFP shoe and not shell out $250 or more, then this, could, this might be your option. And again, I'm leaning toward that half marathon. Okay, there you go, my first impressions. I'm actually, ladies and gentlemen, I'm actually pretty excited, but I just, I don't know about the marathon. I'm, I can't wait for that Irving half marathon, frankly. Okay, vlog's not over, we're going inside. Here we go. Oh my, my, oh, what did I say this morning? Life is beautiful, life is beautiful. Okay, let me just pull it up, I think, some of you know that I am not timing a race right now. I am not timing a race. It's happening. Okay, I'm glad I snuck in the first impression while I had a moment. And yes, earlier today on the run, I was not supposed to run 640 a mile. That was not a steezy day for me. 21 miles, six, the reason I did that, and I said on Strava, throwing steezy out the window just in case. What did I mean by just in case? just in case it's happening and ladies and gentlemen it's happening all right it's happening cannot believe it cannot believe it oh my my better finish packing gotta focus focus 